Okay, so we were tasked with consider this system. First convert it to a matrix equation, and then see if you can use this column multiplication picture to solve it. So here I'm going to take my equations and matrix by them, right? So this thing results in, what did you guys get for your matrix? Uh, one, one, two, three. Yeah. One, two, three. Two, five, two. Two, five, two. Six, negative three, one. Six, negative three, one. Okay, that seems legit. You just took the numbers off, right? And then what goes in here? X, Y, Z. X, Y, Z. Good. And out of this, you get what? Six, four, two. Six, four, two. Oh, that's why I'm going to work. I it out. Okay, cool. So, this thing being a three by three matrix tells you what? Yeah, this is mapping, so this thing, I'm going to call the matrix A, right? Because I always call matrices A. So if A maps R3 as a vector space to R3 as a vector space. Okay. Uh, where does this vector live? X, Y, Z. In R3? Yes. It's a domain. That is so true, I can't even yell at it. <laughs> yes. And the answer to the question I was actually asking <laughs> is, which of these R3s does it live in? It lives in the right, in the right one. This guy? Yeah. Or no, he lives in the left one. Here. What? The this other one lives in the right lives one. in the left oh, one. This is in the domain, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. And that's in the you guys all with me? Start out with so I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, this is vectors playing like X, Y, Z, right? Yeah. Yep. And vectors over here? are which vector is over there? Six four two. Six four two is over there. Six four two. Six four two. Right, so these things are in my domain. This vector is codomain. Good. And also hopefully the range. I think so. Do you guys see why it's important that this hopefully be in the range? Yeah. Yes. If it's not in the range, this equation doesn't make any sense, right? Yeah. I can't solve it? Yeah. My hope is that I can come up with a solution here. Yeah. You guys see that? Mm -hmm. So I hope that this factor lives in the codomain. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so now if I think about the column multiplication picture, right? I can consider this multiplication to be the first column, one, two, six, times what? Good. Weighted by a scalar x. I can add to that the second column. 2, 5, negative 3. Weighted by a, vector, or by a scalar y. Added to the vector 3, 2, 1. Weighted by a scalar z. And this is supposed to equal the vector 6, oh 4, God. 2. <laughs> oh, I got it. Are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> and if you write the column multiplication picture down, sometimes, just sometimes, the planets align, you get lucky, and you notice that uh, x is 0, y is 0, and c is 2. Yeah, no, I just saw that when you were writing it down. Oh, that's so dumb. Uh, yeah, which is one of the reasons that I like to include this example at this point, because it is funny. How, like, you can either see it, and it's instantaneous and stupid easy, or you don't see it, and it's fucking impossible. <laughs> so, to that end, I do want you all to realize that both of those things will happen at various points in this course to you. It is okay to sit and struggle with something that somebody else sees immediately. It is probably just that you're not standing in exactly the right place. Does that make sense? Like, sometimes this is going to come down to just a random happenstance of, like, yeah, or Shia was, like, reading the appropriate thing, or the, like, problem that he was working on in physics happened to inspire some little nonsense that just causes him to see it, and you might struggle for hours. So don't be afraid of that, like, oh, well, if Orion saw it, I must be stupid. What's that? Like, this happens to me. 
single problem that was solving in substitution, and I realized I could zero out one of the vectors and use linear combination. Yep. Yeah, so you had some little experience that caused this to pop to mind, right? Yeah. Which is totally, totally reasonable, and I expect you all to have slightly different experiences because you're slightly different human beings. I mean, only slightly, right? But it happens. Don't, don't worry about it. Okay, so uh, do you guys see how this would be much, much harder were this not an immediate scalar multiple of one of the columns? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah, so this is why the rest of this whole theory, like easy problems like this one are pretty easy, although if you don't see the trick, they can be hard. In general, they are harder. That's cool, then. So to that end, we're going to learn some thoughts. Uh, one of the things I need you to have at your disposal is the easy system to solve. So... The easiest system of equations you can have to solve is this one. You guys recognize that this thing is a system of equations? Yes. yes. Right? If I had to think about this thing as a matrix, so if I were to write this thing out as a matrix equation, you guys see, like, we just did that. We went from a system to a matrix equation. What would this one look like? Uh, wouldn't it just one zero? Oh, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know, it's too easy. Zero. Okay, so this first equation says x is zero, right? Yes, yeah, so there's a zero. No. Well, that means there's a... So there is one x, yeah. oh, zero oh, y's, zero z's, Multiplied by the vector x, y, z is zero. Is zero up here. Yeah. Okay, I see what you're doing. What is the second row? Oh, zero, one, one, zero. Zero, one, zero. Zero, zero, one. Zero, zero, one. And that happens to be set equal to zero. Yeah. Two. And zero, zero, one two. is two. Yep. Okay, so please notice that my life for the well, for at least the next two weeks or so, it's going to be occupied with this right here. You are going to take things like this and make them into things like that. So matrix-wise, what that's going to mean is I want to be able to do stuff to this thing so that this matrix becomes that one. You guys all with me on that? So this matrix over here, my matrix with ones and zeros, this thing is so special I'm going to give it a name. Anybody know what this thing's called? The identity matrix. Good. This is the identity matrix, and this one happens to be three by three. So. I'm going to use the letter I for this. A couple of reasons. One, identity starts with an I. Two, I looks a lot like a big-ass one, which is what this thing's going to act like when you multiply by it. Uh, and then, also, doesn't the both use I for the identity matrix? What do I give a shit what they do? Yeah, everybody uses I for the identity <laughs> matrix. <laughs> yeah, also, this is completely standard notation. Everybody does this. So... Yeah, oh, I erased it. Over here where I put a zero and then I write a size by it, that's slightly non-standard notation. Only probably 90 plus percent of mathematicians will know what you mean by that. This, everybody knows what you mean all day long. Cool. So our plan is going to be to take, like our goal, is to learn to take AX equals B equations And do stuff. Stuff? Like apply magic. Okay. And we're going to get to I x equals, well, answer. B. Uh, a. The codomain? Uh, yeah, but it's going to be an element of the. Huh. 
Yeah, that's going to be weird. It's going to actually be an element of the domain that I end up with here. You see yes. that? Because it's going to be what x is equal to. Yep. Guys with me? So when you I'm going to just the... write x not here. That's going to be the solution to this thing. Uh, One of the ways you could get your hands on that thing is you could invert A to the other yeah. side, right? So, so in the case that A has an inverse, you can think about this vector as A inverse B. But it should be noted that doesn't always work. Right, if the matrix is invertible, yeah, you invert it, you multiply both sides by the inverse, great. Cha-ching. If the matrix isn't invertible, you're kind of jacked, and then you have to do other stuff. Does that make sense? So. Uh, so, do you care how we solve? Because, like, I would, like, there are things where, like, I wouldn't want to use identity, right? Like, well, not this one specifically, but we did. If it wasn't as obvious, I want to go about it like a different way. Is that okay with you? Not only is that okay, that's the next several things we're going to learn, or different options for how to do that. Go. So, uh, as far as we're concerned today, you probably know how to augment and solve using the calculator, right? Yeah. So what we're going to do is we're going to figure out how the calculator works. That's going to be part of this. And then another thing we're going to do is come up with a reliable means of coming up with inverses. Okay, good with that as a plan? I would like that. Okay. Cool.